It's the ASUS PA-Z77-V Pro. It's a step up from the Dash V and a step down from the Deluxe. And what does that mean? I'll tell you guys in just a second. Last week, we took a look at the PA-Z77i Deluxe. That's a, um, a mini ITX motherboard. And it's the Deluxe, meaning it has a few extra features when compared to this one and a few less because this one's a full-size ATX. You know, um, the easy way to do this is just to take a full tour and stop and talk about any uh, technology on the motherboard as we go. So first off, let's start with the CPU. It's socket 1155, and uh, you can see all the way around there we have the nice solid uh, capacitors, solid-state capacitors. And one thing I want to note about this, ASUS uses 5K capacitors on these boards. On the uh, ROG boards, they use 10K capacitors. Most of the solid-state capacitors that you'll see um, uh, just all the way throughout the industry are 2K capacitors. So you've got uber quality uh, here with these capacitors. They're going to last a long time. Also around the motherboard there, we have a 12-phase power design. And uh, that's a little better than the... Um, and the Dash V, that one only has uh, an 8-phase power design. But it's really not about the power design um, as far as the overclocking goes because any of the motherboards uh, in this line, in the Z77 line, any of those can really hit 4.8 or 4.9 gigahertz. So they're all capable of about the same thing. You get to the ROG board, they can go a little bit farther than that. But with these, they're all extremely capable, and that's, uh, by and large, uh, thanks to a lot of the technology going in here. Now, of course, we have the DigiVRM going on here. So um, so we have digital voltage controls uh, with the CPU, uh, the VRM, the RAM, and now also the iGPU. So all this is going to be controlled. You have tons of options in the BIOS. And one other thing that's nice about this is a lot of times underneath these heat sinks here, that's where you have your MOSFETs and your capacitors, um, which your entire uh, VRM is under here. A lot of times uh, those get really hot and they'll throttle your CPU. Now, what they've done um, to sort of fix that is they've given us full control over the thermal junction points so if you know in here somewhere it's it's getting really hot well you can go in and you can raise the threshold of that you know thermal junction from like 130 to 150 and that'll allow you uh, to get the frequency you want with your cpu overclock so that makes me extremely happy you just have to make sure you have good airflow going to your case or else you might fry something so all right, next up, let's talk about T-topology. Now, T-topology is um, sort of a code word that they're using for um, the Intel's next generation trace route um, pattern for like Haswell and stuff like that. It's just, it's just basically the trace routes going from the CPU to the RAM. And they've incorporated this into their Z77 motherboards, and that allows you to hit much higher frequencies on your, um, on your RAM. Now, with an Ivy Bridge CPU, you can hit 1600 megahertz. That's what the official thing is, but with that, 2600, 2800 is not out of the question. We do have six of the four pin fan headers on this. And uh, four pin fan headers are better than three pin fan headers because there's one extra pin. With three pin fan headers, all you really have is like, you know, voltage control. With the fourth pin, you actually have information and you can send that information to the Super IO controller. Even if you're only using three pin fans, the Super IO controller somehow magically is able to detect what kind of fans you have. It can go in and test out all these fans and find out how fast they can go, how slow they can go. Just watch the video on Fan Expert 2. It'll explain it a lot better than I have time to do right now because this is a motherboard video and not a features video. I wish it was both in one, but it would be 90 minutes long and I'm just going on now. It's gonna be 90 minutes anyway. All right, moving on down here, we have um, our Memo K button. And the Memo K button, it does a couple different things. First off, it's sort of like a soft, um, you know, CMOS clear. It will clear like the frequency of the RAM and also like any like overclocking things you've set up, like your the power going to your CPU and the frequencies of your CPU. It'll clear all that information, clear your front your um, front side bus speed. It'll clear all that back to the stock, but it will not clear like all the rest of your uh, UEFI settings. So let's say you're having some trouble with your RAM. Well, you can put in whatever mismatch RAM and press the Memo OK button. It'll cycle through a bunch of different settings and find out what uh, settings work best for your RAM and allow you to boot. So if you're having trouble booting and it's because of your RAM, just press the Memo OK button and you might find yourself a happy person afterwards. Beside that, we have our USB 3.0 um, header. We have one there, and that's um, from the Z77 chipset. And then uh, we're gonna have another one on the other side of the board. I'll show you that in just a second. We have two more of the four pin fan headers. And then we have eight SATA ports. We have um, two six gigabit per second SATA that are from the AS Media controller, and that's much better than like a Realtek controller or a Marvell controller. They're, it's just faster, like 10 to 15% faster. Then we have two that are Intel Z77. Those are six gigabit per second SATA. And then all of the light blue colored ones, um, those are all uh, second gen SATA, which is three gigabits per second. 
Now moving down, we have TPU and also the EPU. That's our dual intelligent processors. Now the TPU is like a turbo processing unit. You throw the switch, it does a quick overclock, and it essentially takes you to 4.3 gigahertz with a 3770K with just the throw of a switch, and then you're done. Now the EPU, you throw that one, and it does like an under voltage algorithm, and it keeps you at your, you know, your stock frequency, but it lowers you know, the power a little bit. All right, just beside that, we have all of our front panel connectors there. And we also have a TB header. That's Thunderbolt on board. So all of these devices, you can get like a bracket or something and uh, have Thunderbolt. There's no Thunderbolt on the back of this unit, but got a TB header right there. Then beyond that, we have four USB 2.0 front panel ports. And then we have another uh, USB 3.0 header for your front panel or back or whatever you want to hook up there. And that's an as media um, controlled port. Here's all of our audio hardware over here on the side. It's the uh, Realtek ALC898. It's, uh, you know, it supports up to 8-channel audio, and it also does DTS Ultra PC2. Now, what that does is it takes a stereo signal and on a hardware level converts it to 5.1 or 7.1-channel audio. Sounds quite pretty nice. It's not like a, an upsample or anything like that or an, or an upmix. It doesn't do that. It's on a hardware level. You can still do the upmix, but we have two one-speed PCI Express slots and two PCI slots, so we've got two legacy slots. And then we have one 16-speed PCI Express slot, one 8-speed slot, and then there's a 4-speed slot, but it's full length. So uh, if you're going to be running SLI or Crossfire, it's going to run an 8 and 8. If you're going to be running more than two graphics cards, I would recommend getting a different motherboard. There's no PLX chip on this one, uh, so you're probably going to run into some issues somewhere because there's not going to be enough lanes. You're going to need a PLX chip, and um, yeah. Or you can just go X79. Let's look at the ins and outs on the back. First off, we have all of our analog audio ports. We have an Intel NIC, and it does not use any of your resources. Like if you use a Realtek, a lot of times it'll use up some of your lanes. The Intel NIC has a, a dedicated lane going straight to it, so I really like that. It's also just faster and better. Intel NICs are the best. Now beneath the Intel NIC, we have two USB 3.0 ports, VGA, DVI. Then we have our digital audio, HDMI, display port, USB 2.0, plug up your mouse and keyboard there when you're first installing your, uh, you know, operating system. Then we have PS2 for mouse and keyboard. It's a combo port. And two more USB 2.0 ports on the back. And we also have Wi-Fi thanks to this module here. It's BG and N wireless. It's uh, single band, 2.4 gigahertz. If you want dual band, you can get the deluxe model. Those do have dual band, and also the ROG models do have dual band. Uh, but if you're fine with single band, this one's quite nice. And we also have Wi-Fi Go. Now, Wi-Fi Go, there's a lot you can do with it. I'll be making a video on that very soon. Uh, but essentially, it allows you to communicate with uh, other devices. Um, you'll need a DLNA-enabled router, and it'll allow you to communicate with other devices in your house. If you have Android, uh, you can install an app, the Wi-Fi Go app, and then control essentially this unit, send stuff to your TV, uh, download stuff straight to your, um, your phone. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this. Too much for this video, but I will make a video on that very soon once I get back from California. Uh, now, since this is a Z77 motherboard, uh, it does work with the uh, Lucid MVP software suite. Uh, so we can take advantage of a couple different programs here if your game supports it. High performance uh, will allow you to use the integrated GPU and the dedicated GPU together. It'll offload some things to the, the integrated GPU. It'll take care of that over there and it'll you know free up your dedicated GPU to do other things and you can get a boost in speed, again, if your game supports it. And also you can use virtual VSync, uh, which is quite nice. VSync cuts you off based upon your refresh rate on your monitor, but virtual VSync uh, it fixes all the tearing issues, but allows you to have higher frame rates than whatever your refresh rate on your monitor is. So we can use all those. Um, guys, it's a pretty loaded motherboard. Of course, the Deluxe and the ROG boards are better, but this has 99% of everything that most of you would need. The components are really high quality. I really like the DigiVRM as well. Um, TPU, EPU, those things are just really simple ways to uh, you know, take advantage of overclocking and underclocking from a voltage standpoint, but not a frequency standpoint. Now, we use this one for a lot of our different benchmarks here in the studio. Uh, we're going to continue to use it for, I don't know, whatever we need to use it for. Subscribe. It's over there. Email me, inbox at techsyndicate.com. And maybe I'll email you back. I get a lot of emails, but I'll try and see what I can do. Um, oh, yeah, we have uh, game deals. If you guys like game deals, look in the description. You'll see game deals. You click on that. A lot of the newest games like Bioshock, etc., cetera, uh, are... Um, on sale right now for cheaper you can get them on steam you get a steam key it helps us out it helps you out everybody goes home happy and i think that's about it I'll see you next time that was really a uh, cheesy see you next time hey george bush america see you guys next time
uh, especially if they're dealing D. Here we go again, DLNA. Email me inbox at techsyndicate.com. Techsyndicate.com. Email me techsyndicate at techsyndicate at techsyndicate at techsyndicate.com. And it's time. I'm tired. It's like two in the morning. <laughs> I'm two in the morning. I'm tired. Nuclear. What does he say? Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear. America? Nuclear capabilities? Bye.